What's up? You're listening to Trish Stratus, WWE Hall of Famer, and you're listening to Vibe 105. Keep listening because Stratisfaction is guaranteed. Vibe Talks. Vibe Talks. More than just music. Hey, everybody. This is Giancarlo Alino and Aaron Zaretsky reporting for Vibe 105 with a sports Vibe talk segment where we're happy to be joined by our guest today. Uh, she's making a return here to the Vibe 105 airwaves. She is on Canada's Got Talent. She's a WWE Hall of Famer and a York U legend. She's Trish Stratus. How are you doing, Trish? I'm doing great. Thank you. And Trish, like this season, we last spoke when you were just announced as a judge on Canada's Got Talent. Uh, now as you're approaching the finale here on May 17th and you look back on this season, uh, what has this whole experience been like so far? Oh my gosh. It's, I can't, I can't believe first of all, that we're coming to the finale. Like, you know, we're in the semifinals now, uh, which was incredible yesterday seeing everyone. And then of course, Canada's voting. We've got one more week of semifinals and into the finale uh, the following week, which is the live finale, which by the way, you know, that we'll be joined by the boss man himself, right? You know that just to throw that out there, Simon Cowell will be joining us, which is pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, I'm so excited about that. So look, to, you know, from getting the call, which I think we spoke back in November when we just got it got announced, getting the call to do this show, I was like, man, you know, my first thought was like, this is going to be great to do a, a show that supports Canadians, of course. Um, you know, as, as you know, I've, through my travels and my WB journeys, I've always stayed, you know, home to a home hometown girl uh, and, and home country girl, really. Um, and so to do something with Canadian content like this with Canadian talent was amazing. But um, just um, to do something that my kids would like to watch on TV has been great as well, you know? So the kids have been loving it and it's kind of a unique experience to be watching with my family and knowing that there's families all across Canada. They're enjoying it and enjoying the, you know, the plethora of emotions that the show offers. It's such a feel good show. I'm so proud of it. It's been such a journey watching the judges all, you know, you do it and you, you, you perform, you do your judging and, you know, it's in this, this you know, live theater and how do you know, but the way the show comes together, you know, and don't forget, we see the acts, but then when you watch it back on TV and you see the stories that they put with it, it just makes it, you know, goosebumps, goosebump moments all around, right? So it's been an incredible journey, loving it. I really don't want it to end, to be honest. It's, uh, yeah, it's creeping up to the finale and I don't want it to be over. I just want to, you know, it's just, it's so much fun. So hopefully we'll be coming back for season two. And if there is a season two, will you be a judge on that too? A thousand percent. I mean, as long as they ask me back, I would, yes. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. And uh, which performer or performance has impressed you the most this season? Well, I don't know if you saw my golden buzzer moment, but um, Theo and, uh, and Mila were my golden buzzer moment. And it's funny because I believe, so what we had done is we were out in Niagara Falls and there was about four days of auditions. We went through about 90 auditions and, you know, you have, uh, it ended up being six golden buzzers, which is one for each judge plus the host. We ended up doing a group judge, um, golden buzzer just because that moment was so amazing. We had to do it. Um, but these two really, and it's funny because, you know, it was day three and not to say I hadn't seen standout talent, but, you know, Lily grabbed the, the dance group and uh, Shia was the, uh, the wonderful pro pro performer who did Jack's song. I don't know if you saw that, but, you know, that was Howie's Golden Buzzer. So me and Cardinal had not done our Golden Buzzer. And you start to go like, oh, my gosh, where's my uh, Golden Buzzer? You know, and then you're like, oh, man, maybe I missed my Golden Buzzer. Maybe I didn't. I, I said a yes, but it should have been my Golden Buzzer. But Howie assured us in the very beginning, he said, you'll just know. It'll be a feel thing. Believe me, you'll just know. So I was waiting for that feel good moment to come. And boy, did it ever, I remember it just like distinctly. I, I, I just, I mean, these guys, as soon as they got on stage and they do like, um, you know, aerobatic, um, I don't know what they can call it. It's, it's, it's the aerobatic stuff, like very Cirque du Soleil stuff. Um, yeah. yeah like just, acrobatic gym, gymnastics. Please. Yeah. Like I know there's like a proper acro something. There's like a, probably a proper, a proper turn that we're not getting, giving them. <laughs> you can look it up and, and put it in there, but uh, we'll, we'll tweet it out there. But I mean, they were so excited to show that craft, I guess, to <clears throat> the world. He said, you know, a lot of times when people think of gymnastics and they think of, you know, the beam and people doing that kind of like on the rings, but they don't think of it like this is a beautiful dance. And uh, I just knew as soon as I saw them, I just, I had this feeling, I just felt it. And I just, you know, I was so honored to know that like, I had a tiny part in maybe changing the trajectory of their lives, um, this giving them that opportunity. So it was a really special moment. I can't, like, they're, they're going to be in the semifinals because um, we, we did nine acts this week. And then next week, he'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see them, you know, in the, the, the finals, uh, the season, um, sorry, the semifinals. And we'll see. I'll be reading for my kids. They're, uh, thir well, she's, gosh, they're so young too. They're so young. And so just to me, seeing a young person 
so, you know, just elevated in their craft and just pursuing something with passion when, you know, the nowadays kids sit there and they're on the, on, and, you know, on their iPads all day and, and don't do things productive. I know how much it takes the dedication to just do what they did on stage. So I was su- super impressed and I can't wait to see what they do. Yes. And I did actually see the, that performance, right. And like the gymnastics, like the acrobats, like all the stunts and everything. And yeah. like just seeing your reaction, like as you're like jumping in the air, that was, yeah. that was like my reaction too. It's like, oh, wow. It's like, yeah, just the athleticism, the strength and, and just everything. It's just like, wow, like mind blowing. Yeah. And, you know, I went to um, a Cirque du Soleil, opened up their, their show here. Uh, it was called Curious, uh, Curious, I believe it was called um, in Toronto. And it just like the week after. And I swear, like, I literally, I saw them. Like, I was like, they're going to be on that stage for sure one day. And like to be, you know, part of their journey to know that they'll end up somewhere like that doing performing like that. It's just what an honor. With Trish Stratus here on Vibe 105, the Sports Vibe Talk segment. Uh, Trish, just uh, bringing that up, uh, the finale there. You mentioned Simon. He's going to be there. I saw the video that uh, was released about him announcing that he's going to be on that finale. And he said, you know what? The judges have been too nice this season. Uh, what are your response to that? Um, well, he's not wrong. It, there's definitely a Canadian vibe to the show. Uh, there was one show, I believe it was, was it this two weeks ago or maybe it was last week, but uh, where they did a compilation of our nose, just to let you know, like there was a lot of nose, but I guess, you know, here's the thing. It's a feel good show. And we're definitely, you know, the way we presented the show, I guess, you know, from an editing standpoint, you know, to get technical um, is, you know, yes, there's, there's some nose here and there. Uh, but I mean, there's, it's definitely like showing these journeys, showing the positive stories. You only have a certain amount of time to like decide what you want to focus on from a show perspective right so um so it definitely comes across and i would say for sure like it's very canadian because i look my kids watch like all the got talent brands they watch the youtube compilations where you know it's like all the no's and so you know you it, it's different when you watch a compilation of like six no's and it's you're having a blast watching that it definitely you know it doesn't it's not like that on a real on a regular episode right um and so um and also yeah we, we could use a little american um brashness i guess you could say <laughs> And like, uh, even on that, like the judging, like you mentioned there, what the filming was like, uh, this was all done through a pandemic. So like, what was the day to day like for the judging and, uh, just the audition process and how did it maybe change, uh, your perceptions about it or even just the show going into it? Uh, well, yeah, it was during the pandemic. Luckily in November, when we filmed the auditions, uh, we just had broke out of that you know, we were on the lockdown and I think we had just come out of the lockdown. So we were able to have a studio audience, which was a, a big win for us. Cause you know, we got the, I remember getting the announcement saying, guys, guess what? You'll have an audience, which, cause we weren't sure if we we're going to. So having the audience was amazing. Um, and then unfortunately, like um, for the semifinals, you know, everyone, like everyone, we had gone back into lockdown at that point because this was in January. And I like many, many crew members, uh, some, uh, you know, maybe your neighbor, maybe you, a lot of people got COVID in January. If you recall, I got COVID in January. (laughs) Um, I'm not sure, you know, I think my kids brought it home. Who knows what it was. So we all got COVID. Luckily we were, you know, symptom free. We didn't have one single symptom. So who knows? It was, I honestly was like, are you sure this thing's right? Like I couldn't believe how just completely normal I felt and my kids as well. So we were really lucky, but, um, yeah, I, I was not able to do the semifinals, um, because it happened during the taping. So, so yeah, so, you know, doing a show during the pandemic, um, luckily we have contingency plans in place and they were able to pick it up and they did the show with uh, Lily and Howie and they got us, you know, a special guest judge, which was Jason Priestley. So that was kind of cool. So he was really good on the show last night. Um, and then, um, yeah, so, you know, things like that happen. So during, and then they didn't have an audience. So at that time it was the January where people, everyone was getting COVID. We went back into lockdown. So there was no audience, um, you know, limited audience and, um, you know, everybody's mask. So, you know, it's, but you know what, it's, at the end of the day, I don't think we're, hopefully, I mean, we're mentioning it now, but I think you're just watching the show. I think you're just watching these amazing journeys unfold um, and these performances, you know, focusing on the performances. And the cool thing is now at the semifinals is it's, um, you know, the, the judges narrow down their top two and then um, the rest is up to Canada. So, you know, we can save the acts by going and voting at citytv.com and getting in there. And it's kind of cool to have that this part of the process, which is now going to involve um, the whole of Canada. With Trish Stratus here, uh, CGT judge and Dodie Hall of Famer on Vibe 105. Uh, Trish, so a couple months back at a WWE live event in Toronto, uh, you had an encounter with Becky Lynch, which resulted in you slapping Becky. Um, Is that possibly the start of working together in the ring? 
<laughs> well, um, you know, I was hosting the events uh, in Kitchener in Toronto. And yeah, Becky Lynch was being a bit of a brat. And <laughs> so it came down to, you know, a little slap from Trish Stratus to put her in her place. Will it result in anything else? I don't know. Uh, you know, I still get asked about the... Sasha Banks Trish Stratus moment from the Rumble from 2018. So uh, that hasn't come to fruition so far. So um, I don't know. Uh, at this point, I've just been focusing on the show. And um, I don't know. I've been, I saw Asuka has returned back to WWE television. So I'm going to be patiently watching that feud unfold. Uh, Becky, in the meantime, has hit rock bottom and lost her, her, her stuff. So we'll see what's going to... She lost her women's championship. So I'm uh, always here in the, in the waiting in the wings and watching. And, you know, maybe, maybe or maybe not. That's what I said, you guys. <laughs> people were pretty interested in it it was kind of fun though yes yeah and and then it happened around the same time as the oscars right with uh, will smith and chris rock and i remember i think you tweeted out it's like the trend it's like the trendsetter <laughs> yeah yeah, the time was pretty crazy. Yeah. Yes, I uh, I don't know if I should have hopped on that bandwagon, but uh, I sure did. <laughs> and Trish, like uh, just even mentioning that, like about the Sasha Banks match, like Kurt Angle, uh, shout out to him and his podcast. They picked up the quote and immediately Sasha Banks responded to that and said that uh, if you wanted to get back in the ring with her to call Vince McMahon and she had his number. And uh, I just want to get your uh, response to that and. I guess it's uh, only fair that we offer you that same to respond to Sasha Banks. <laughs> well, uh, Sasha Banks, I don't know if she knows or no, but um, uh, I have Vince's number as well. And uh, <laughs> she's not the only one who has Vince's number. And, uh, you know, if she wants to make it happen, then she can call me and uh, make it happen. How about that? And also, like, uh, wow. even on this topic, like, of uh, wrestling, like, uh, Aaron and I, like, we've been at uh, different events here, uh, different stadium events at full capacity and uh, early on when there was limited. And you got a chance uh, last month to be at WrestleMania weekend, the Hall of Fame. And uh, that whole environment, again, was a full stadium for the first time in over two years. So yeah. what was it like to be back in that environment and to see uh, all your colleagues again? Oh, it was... It was awesome. I mean, yeah, you have to remember, especially us from in Canada, you know, um, like even with the Kitchener and the Toronto shows, that was the weekend before WrestleMania. Um, you know, that was my first taste and, and our first taste as, as Ontarians that we got to be in that full capacity crowd. We were sort of in crowds again and we were around people and, you know, the mask mandates were, were you know, talking about being dropped. Some were dropped already in certain places. And um, so that was like a good little uh, taste of what was to come. Then I was in Dallas. And it was like full blown, 100 percent, like zero mass, a thousand people everywhere around you. Um, so I guess I was lucky I had that like way to ease in. But I, I got to be honest, like it, it, it's really special. I mean, I, I actually did a when I was in the ring, when I was saying goodbye to the crowd, I was saying like it, it was pretty special to know that we've put up with so much for so long um, over the two years. And we've, you know, been patient and, you know, we've had safety, safety concerns first and things like that. But um, to be able to get to the point where we were all gathering again, and of course, as wrestling fans, you know, like minded people all together we felt really, really special. And so, yeah, when I went to WrestleMania weekend, the weekend after. It was amazing. You know, th th those weekends are incredible. Like just, you know, as a fan myself, right. To just know the magnitude of the weekend itself, what it means as a wrestling fan, you know, as we know, the entire year, you know, culminates to WrestleMania. So that's really special as a wrestling fan. Um, and then, yeah, getting to see my colleagues and hang out with my bestie. I hadn't seen my bestie, Amy, Lita in two years, we hadn't seen each other in two years. So it was our first time seeing each other and getting back on track. And, you know, now we have a number of uh, autograph signings that we'll do throughout the year that we can finally get back and, you know, to do. And it's been great. You know, it feels like things are finally getting normal. I just got back from the UK. I did a full on autograph signing, zero masks and off we went and it was fine. Everybody's safe. And, you know, we tested and we flew and everyone's good. So um, the things that are in place are good and hopefully we're getting back to normal and it's feeling really good. And like during WrestleMania weekend, you were amongst your colleagues watching the Dodo Hall of Fame, like watching The Undertaker give his Hall of Fame speech. What was that like being in the arena listening to uh, The Undertaker deliver his Hall of Fame speech? Oh, that was incredible. Um, obviously, you no. Know taker for 20 years now 20 plus years because he was obviously there back in the day when i was there and um and yeah i mean he's always been a great supporter he's always he took the time to watch the women's matches or when we know slowly we were creeping onto the radar he would be like all right you guys keep at that that was really good or you know knowing that like from us we would do a match thinking like, um, how about instead of hair pulls, we're going to do like real wrestling moves and uh, maybe, or maybe, you know, maybe, or maybe not the 
they'll be it'll be noticed we'll see you know it's kind of one of those uh things and and slowly but surely it got noticed by the fans and then of course by the you know the the head the heads of the of the company and and we started to do them and you know get integrated into storylines things like that but yeah taker was always supportive and, and was great about watching stuff and saying yeah you guys keep at that this is this is good stuff and um you know and of course his wife michelle you know we're really close friends and um we worked together for years as well so you know having him have this moment which was obviously so fitting i mean he's been a stable for so long in uh in wwe and uh as a fan you know everyone he's he's the guy he's you know you can literally probably said anyone you know the undertaker yeah everybody knows the undertaker right so yeah. to watch him and then to see the mark uh which is we've seen mark backstage mark calloway's who we know backstage and then you see which i think the fans is the first time really pulling the curtain and seeing mark uh as opposed to the undertaker full on and i know for him you could tell he was a bit nervous it was different for him to sort of present that side but i think it was great i think it was the right time to do it and i think the fans appreciated it and i think it made it really special. Yeah, most most definitely. Uh, this is Aaron Tereski and Chikolina with Trish Stratus here on Vibe 105. Uh, Trish, earlier in the year, like, you know, you've been busy with Canada's Got Talent. Uh, you were also on a movie set um, being in a lead role for a movie. Congrats, by the way. Um, are there any details at this time you can share about this uh, new movie that you'll be in? Um, well, thank you for the congrats on that. That was super fun. It was like a bucket list thing. I mean, I had done a cameo uh, in 2020. Um, it's crazy to think even 2020, we we're still talking about pandemic stuff, but it was one of the first, uh, productions that were greenlit once we got out of that first lockdown, believe it or not. And I, I oh. did a cameo in a movie. It was a Christmas movie and the, they really, um, enjoyed what I had done, um, in that movie. And they offered me my own movie. And that's how I got that. Um, just, it was them offering me a lead in my own movie, which was super fun. So I, I um, I don't know if it's out there or not, but it is a Christmas movie. Um, and so it won't come out until the end of the year. Everyone keeps saying, when's it coming out? I'm like, well, it's a Christmas movie. So <laughs> it'll be out <laughs> at the end of the year. And it was, it was one of their first productions. So it's kind of tough to, you know, film something in January of 2022, but then you got to wait till probably November of 2022 to, to actually have it come out. But um, it was a great experience, man. I mean, the production company I work with, they're fantastic people. I mean, they're like a fam. They have such a great a uh, group of people that they work together. It's a big crew that they have for years worked together. And you could tell it's just a cohesive u- unit. Um, everyone works so well together. And, and it was just a nice, um, a nice environment. I went out to just North of, of, um, of Toronto, like, you know, cottage country went up there and uh, was out there for about three weeks filming it. And I was home on weekends. So that was the first time I'd been away from my kids for that long, which was kind of crazy, but everyone adjusted and it was a great experience. I loved it. It was a good way to kick off 2020. That's for sure. I'm excited about the movie. It's, it's a super cute, you know, it's a Christmas movie. It's a really feel good movie. You'll, you'll definitely get some laughs and, and enjoy the story and, and uh, you know, some, perhaps see a little romance, but in, in the movie as well. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Looking, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> we'll do an interview in November. Uh, it'll be our annual November interview that we'll <laughs> talk about that one. <laughs> oh, nice very nice <laughs> uh trish uh, before we wrap up here and let you go uh, how can our listeners and viewers here follow you on social media and uh how can they follow canada's got talent well, Canada's Got Talent um, obviously is on Tuesday nights on City TV, 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, but it's also available at any time on demand. Like we have a City TV app. They can, uh, City TV Plus app as well. You, you can uh, watch on CityTV.com. So it's all, it's all available um, for any of our U.S. listeners uh, or international listeners. Um, you know, they, a lot of my fans are, are from, not from necessarily from Canada, and they can't get the show. So what we've done on TrishStratus.com is we've compiled. It's been great working with CGT. They've given us um, a lot of clips so we basically we have a recap of each episode there where we basically through clips you can see the entire show and relive the moments you know we have a writer who came on we brought on board to like cover it his name's bob and he just uh yeah does a really great breakdown for the show and gives some great insight and uh yeah so and then of course my social media is true stratus calm across the the different platforms but um yeah it's been super fun and you know i love that like I've, it's been great to see some of our non-canadian fans following along as well so it's been really fun that's great looking forward to that and uh trish we appreciate you taking the time and coming on here again to talk about canada's got talent and uh we'll look forward to seeing you on the finale on may 17th thank you so much with simon cowell i know i, I think i mentioned this I that. <laughs> and now back to your vibe vibe 105